bit too many projects going on at the moment, but they're going at good speed. One of the projects, this handrail for a building, you know, normally I do restorations. It's kind of amazing to get to do something new. But along with that meant that I had to really mature my metalworking of my new workshop. And I had to organize all my tools and get the right stuff. At least I had most of the stuff, but it's just a matter of getting it in the right configuration. I started making this cut, this one right here, outside with the angle grinder. And I actually made these little pillow blocks to hold the pipe so it wouldn't roll around. I thought I was quite smart for doing that. And then I also 3D printed these little angle blocks so I can accurately set my little bevel gauge thing and mark it with the soapstone. But then as I had the, the piece vertical and was trimming it to make sure it was straight, I realized, wait a minute, my friend has a whole horizontal bandsaw in the basement of the workshop. So at least I brushed up my angle grinding skills and then I promptly came down here and made easy little cuts on this. Oh well. How I'm getting the angle right is I made these little wooden blocks and it's absolutely perfect for organizing, uh, for, for ang angling the, the pipe. And now this is just based off of the angle of the miter saw. Now, forgive me, I did make a mistake. I have one and a half inch tubing, not 1.25. I believe it's one and a half, actually. Let me make sure. Yes, one and a half. One and a half ID, at least. So, so th this is wrong. It's one and a half inch tubing. But I got 21 feet of it and I cut it up to fit in our car. You know, I, I don't have a trailer or anything. I'm not really set up for moving this stuff right now. But I just have the capability to do this. I ordered a 16 inch by four inch steel plate from eBay. And that should come in. And then I'm able to make this structure just by welding. Thankfully, I won't need to be going into the cement. I'll be going into the masonry and the asphalt. And now it's just a matter of, well, plugging it in, but turning it on and making the cut. I'm glad I vacuumed up real quick because WD-40 and sawdust make for a nasty mess. Speaking of that, I got a bunch of sawdust on here too. Oops. Wow, that actually worked. By the way, I got the rest of it vacuumed up so we don't have to worry about the sawdust at the moment. Or anymore, really. I'm done with the woodworking. Oh, I shouldn't have put this here. Whatever. So now the only thing left to do is to measure to see if it's even right because i just took these measurements off of blender wow it's actually right and not only is it right but we have a half inch to use up so it's a half inch longer which is good because i did make that like a little bit longer and that will allow me to have a little bit more freedom in case the measurements don't really line up i like that a lot since i'm cutting like this that means that whatever is over here, since this is the top well, uh, this is the, the top rail, will be facing down. So for that, I'll want the, the weld to be on the bottom. Now to get the right measurement. So I marked a little bit right there. And now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to measure where on that mark do I actually want it. Okay. Okay. 
Well, this looks pretty good. And does it go along with the original measurement? It does. It does. I dare say that's looking almost complete. But the only issue is, due to this joint being different, I can't rely upon the same measurement. And so I very well might need to cut that. And I need to cut it that way as well. You know what? Maybe printing these little 3D printed angle blocks was pretty useful after all, because it is just a good sanity check but that'll be 30 degrees there. So that'll be 30 degrees off of that. And this will be straight. And then once I get that cut, I figure I can just by hand, since I don't have a hole saw and there's only one, I can cut that so it nestles around it quite well. To which I may need to recut the end if I'm not so exact with that end. So I ordered this piece of steel Somebody online on eBay sells them for like 20 bucks, custom cut. So it's like, you know what? Normally I would just like take a day to hack it myself. But for this, this is perfect for the, uh, the wall plate. And so that'll be like this to some degree. I might alter the design a little bit, but that'll be perfect for it. And I also did the measurements in Blender the CAD software that I use, or the 3D modeling software. And from this tip to this tip, it's gonna be 12.86 inches. And I've, I figured I can do a 12 and 13 16 inches. So I need to do, um, let's see. Oh, where's my 30 degree one? Ah. Here, here we go. So I need to do a 30 degree cut like that and then I'll make it prepared to meet onto this and then I'm gonna since I don't have a hole saw I'm gonna do the grinding by hand and what was I gonna do man I am just I'm tired today if I have it like this it, it makes this be way too far over and it'll actually push it over like that right so if I just have it out a bit then it can make the cut like that and still grip in line okay so that'll that'll uh, line up perfectly on here I just marked I mean I didn't use my soapstone this time I just marked it with that then yeah like if I if I take this 15 degree wedge and place it on there kind of flattens it from my view makes it square and then if I take this one and add it on there it flattens it on there for the most part and makes it look square so I made an oil drip cat here smart Take that off. I'm gonna take that off. That'll be I just realized all the W40 made it so it didn't make a mark. Oh well. Um this is probably the last thing that this old grinding wheel does. Cause it's so it's so ground away. Oh look at that. take too long. I 
I might also use these to hold these parallel when I weld them. That's a good idea. We'll see though. I think I can make that work. This is uh, too high. This table is curved. It's like a roadway. It's like curved. So, but yeah, that's what we got. There we are. Yeah. So I marked that up. So where the tubes will go. And now, in order for me to weld it, I'll need to clean off the edges. Now that I taught you a little bit how to, how to weld, by the way, to the viewers at home, that was her first weld. She actually did pretty well. I've seen some people do a lot of like snot welds when they first start, but yours actually, you actually started with farmer welds. It's kind of funny. Farmer welds, oh yeah, yeah. You know? I, yeah, you, that's pretty good. That's actually starting a pretty high level. I'm pleased with it. What I'm figuring is, I'm glad I got this little tool because I'm probably going to see if I can get a, uh, a bigger thing and then just go like... Like that. And just kind of clean it up. Mm-hmm. You know the old saying, gr uh, grinder and paint? Yep. this is going the job that I got is so easy because it's right over here this is where it's going nice you ready how it'll look yeah and then once it's painted it's gonna look really good yep i don't think it's i don't think i even need to go to 120 grit i think 37 grit's fine like this seems fine the paint mm -hmm. will uh cover in all those fine yep you turn it off it's the next day and i finally got the last little bits cleaned up I just wanted to get a different flap disc and give another try at these parts. It's really difficult to do that, but I think I got it good enough. And also this part, it's very tight there, but I was able to get it. Now what I'm doing is I took a paper towel and I used some acetone and I've been cleaning it off because now I'm going to paint it. And I don't want any of the oils on there or the ash or a flux from the welding. But this metal comes with that mill oil on it. And we need to take that off if we're going to paint it and make it last a long time. It evaporates so quickly. I 
but I am getting quite a bit off. I'll make four passes with this using each side. I had to get a board out because it just wasn't working, but I may paint it the other way. I don't know. I'm going to focus on these parts like this, but I don't want to have a drippy edge on that side. We're going to try to get as much use as we can out of my 2020 gloss black that I took back from Illinois. But we'll see. I mean, it's still very liquidy. So that's good. And I, I stored it in a very cool place. It wasn't in the, in, in the heat or anything. So it seems like it's survived. But I haven't opened it since 2021. So we'll see. And then I'm going to sacrifice one of these brushes to put it on. This really isn't going to survive that much. This oil-based paint is such a difficult thing to use. So I'll let this harden up. But later on, I'll soak it in acetone and then that'll undo it and I can resuscitate it. But these were ones, I keep finding these people uh, in the trash. People keep giving them to me. So for the time being, I won't try, I don't have my jars of cleaner and stuff. So I don't have a big enough jar to put these in, for instance. All the little jars I have are tiny. So for this instance, I'll be wasteful, but I need to get it done. So it makes sense. The consistency is actually very, very good. It has dried on the lid. Interesting that it just came right off. You see a little bit here. Still a bit of a film of it, but I don't have my drill right now. Actually, yes, I do, but I'm not going to use it. And uh, the consistency is already really good. This is a welding wire that I bent into a stirrer years ago. And it is making like a bubble but the same kind of consistency as before. So I bet this is actually still pretty good. Nice long strokes. Let's see, do we put enough on there? Is it, it is kind of melting together. That's good. Yes. This feels good. In multiple ways. The consistency feels good. And it also feels good to get this far along in a nice project without too many big issues. This is one of those situations where you paint and you're, you're worried about all the, the lines that you're leaving. But then you look up and it's all glossy and beautiful. I'm putting thick paint on this too. While I wait for that side to dry, now I need to come over here and start drilling the hole in the asphalt. Oh, I guess, I guess it rained, the mark's gone. Milwaukee bit on the side of the road so figured it's worth a shot helps out so my battery died it's fine I just didn't charge it and we're through the top layer of asphalt. Now we're just into sand and, and gravel. So I'm happy. That's pretty much all the hard part done. The rest of it is just that stuff that I can slowly mulch up and suck out whenever I have the uh, vacuum charged more. It's been about an hour and this is just dry enough to touch. If I flip it over, it will stick, but I plan to put several coats on this anyway, so 
this first coat is just here to keep it from rusting. And then after that, it's easy. So I can flip it over and I'll just deal with it. Oh, interesting. You can see a bit of the, the circle of where I welded it. It changed the, um, changed the structure. It's interesting. And there we have the other side ready to go. It's pretty good. The one place I can't paint it when it's in place is the back and the bottom. I'm gonna let it dry overnight, but I'm very happy with it. That one layer of paint will do a good job of keeping it from rusting. And then later, once I have it in place, I can put another whole coat on it. I'm not gonna do three coats because I figure later on in a few years, I can do more coats. I spent another day to get that hole deeper and look at this. It actually just sits perfectly now. I got anchors to drill it into the masonry. I put extra paint on the bottom and extra paint on the back of that plate. And then later on, I can paint the rest of it again. And I got mortar for us to put mortar in the base. And then, oh gosh, it's like, the only thing I don't have is a level. I don't have a level, unfortunately. Looks good from here. Looks good from here as well. And looks good from here also. Not too bad when I'm going piece by uh, different sizes. Unfortunately, I'm sweating like crazy. It's just a warm day again. Next size we need. Hmm. Unfortunately, we need this, so we'll go with this next. That's gonna take a while with just a carpenter hammer. I need to find a sledgehammer. We have those holes drilled now. Thankfully my a friend of mine came over and I had asked to borrow a larger hammer, but he instead brought his hammer drill and we got those drilled. They're a little bit off center, but I mean, that, that you kind of have to expect that, but they're close enough to where they'll work. So now what we can do is we can remove this and we can paint it one more time, add another layer of paint because we've scuffed it up and stuff. And um, well, mostly on the back side, and I wanna make sure I paint inside of here. And then that way tomorrow when we add, when we actually install it, It'll have a nice layer of paint on it. And we won't have to worry about it rusting up. So I brought it over here to paint again. And I noticed that I could scrape off a lot of this paint. So there must have still been like an oxide layer or, or oil or something on there. And I'm going to have to remove all of this paint from this section. And then the top section, maybe if it has a whole week to cure, it'll be fine. But... I don't want the part that's gonna be in the ground to have weak paint. As we saw with over there, the paint sticks to the end plate really well, just not the tubing, but it sticks to the welds really well. So again, over here, this part where I ground it away, the paint was really, really stuck. It was only here that it was peeling off. So we don't have to worry so much about that then. 
It's just a matter of there being a surface layer. And I've now taken that away. So at least for this, that paint will be on there good. Okay guys, it's the final day. Well, I mean the final the day we're, we're putting it in. And I have everything together. I'm just working up the gumption to make sure I have everything and the order of operations set up correctly. So we have our mortar set up. I bought a bag of mortar, put the excess mortar into a bucket I found. I have enough water to make the mortar and to clean this container that I found on the side of the road. Then I have the bolts with the washers already installed. I have the wrench with the correct socket. I have this painted and it's in a nice dried state. And then I have this that I also found in the trash and I cleaned it up, restored it, and this is ready to use. And then also just to stop any of the rocks or anything from piercing the paint, I put tape on the bottom. I was tempted to put it on more, but I don't really know if I need to do that. I just don't want to scrape away any paint and then over 20 or 30 years that rusting into it because I want this to last as long as possible. And then, yeah, that's it. Time to install. I have no idea about the volume of mortar that I'll need, but I'll get a goodly amount. This is actually the first time I've ever mixed mortar. I guess that'd be probably a pretty good consistency. I don't want to add any more water. Kind of afraid to mess up the mixture but I probably did an okay job from the first one. I'll probably have to fight it to get in there, but we'll see. just to see if these holes actually line up or not. This top one is the one that I hand drilled, so it's going to be tighter, a lot tighter. Maybe it's too tight, actually. I made it to the exact specifications of the drawing because of the uh, lag shields asked for, and I think maybe they expect you to go with a bigger hole actually because that uh that one drill that my friend brought over it made actually a bigger hole yeah the top hole was the hole i would probably make if i was hook hanging something off of like a third floor because that's really tight it's actually digging into the zinc shield oh oh huh. okay wasn't expecting that. Well, wow, I didn't realize you could actually break it just by hand, but okay. Um, thankfully, the right, oh, this is rock solid. I'm very happy with that. I, yeah, that's surprising, okay. Didn't realize that could easily just break off. So I think the only course of action left is, I might weld that if, they, if the owners of the building want that there. And I'm going to go get a refund because I'm a stickler about that stuff. But other than that, honestly, I'm going to paint this in a week or so. And it'll be nice and fine. I shouldn't really feel too bad about that. But it does make me worried. I didn't realize that you could actually... I didn't think you could actually break a bolt like this just by hand tightening it. That's a little bit surprising. I was thinking that you could do that with a um, impact driver, but I didn't know that you could do that by hand with a small wrench. But even with those three bolts, it is really sturdy. So I'm, I'm really happy with that. And I do feel confident that I squished enough mortar down in there because it really feels like I, I um, 
couldn't squish any more. And there's only a little bit left because whenever I put the handrail in there, it pushed a lot of it up. So I'm really happy with this and yeah. I'm glad it's in the shade too, because then I don't have to like moisten the mortar or anything. It's just gonna slowly dry on its own. Because I understand, right, if, you, if it dries too quickly, then you have to uh, spritz water on it. Because it's a little bit, it's a little hot out here. And uh, I'm glad I don't have to worry about that. Off camera, I ran around and cleaned up that and cleaned up that. It seems to have worked for the most part. Although that seems like stuff splashed over onto it. It's some of that dust. Oh well. So I'll know next time not to go too hard on the... It really doesn't make much sense that I could break it because I wasn't even putting that much torque onto it. I'm gonna ask for a refund because that just doesn't seem, that just doesn't seem right. Cause um, yeah, I've, I've tightened down bolts on all sorts of stuff, especially older bolts and they didn't do that with a, I mean, it's not like I had a big pipe on it. Anytime I've stripped out a bolt, or, uh, cracked a bolt like that, it's been with a, um, been with a, a, a cheater bar. I don't know. So just in case I didn't say this already, I talked to the client and he said that these three bolts are more than good enough and I should just cover over this. So with successive layers, I filled that in with JB Weld and I've given it a few days to dry. Now I'm just going to skim it a little bit and then paint over all of these. I'm particularly painting over these so that they don't rust up. So um, it's, been, it's been a day. I let the plastic cure on the little thing that's gonna go on, on front of there. And it's, it's nice and stiff, I just need to paint it now. And I figure, so what's probably happened is there was probably a bit of flux that made it look like it was solid, but water dripped down there. So it's now probably up, up to here in water. I don't really think I want to weld this because I'd have to find a place to ground it. You know, I really encapsulated this entire thing in paint. And I'm also gonna have to drain out all that water. So for the time being, Oh, this is, uh, dull. There we go. Look at that. So the water's draining out now. Okay, so... Yeah, the water's coming out. Let's see if I can poke it in there. So, I'm gonna let that dry. This is probably the one spot that I could get that, because also it's a really hard spot to get to grind. Yep. That's the one issue. Actually, it's kind of surprisingly hard to paint 3D printed items. It wipes right off. Oh yeah, I can see that. I probably need plastic specific paint, which I have a can of, uh, oh, it's whatever paint that's made for plastic, but that's all I have to do for now. Cause that's in Illinois. Well guys, I decided I was just going to paint this part. And I think that painting it will, will do fine because if it was sealed up, this would build up pressure when it gets hot and it would pop that paint out. But if I just leave the bottom open and paint through it, it should be fine for a while because um well then i also realized that it was actually a bigger there's other mistakes going on with this because i tried removing the paint or tried removing the stickers and they removed the paint the glue on the back of the of this tape it melted its way into the enamel paint so that's a even bigger mess i had to scrape off like a gooey paint mixture it like liquefied the paint and i guess that's how it sticks and uh, then sanded it. So I'm gonna have to repaint all of this, but that's okay. That's okay. This is all, like it just happens to be that I'm about to paint it. Okay, this is actually gonna go pretty easily. 
I made this little sign just so it would be, wouldn't be rude in case somebody came up here and touched it. I had to end up painting this too because there was a few parts where I could see that a few places where the paint had been a bit thin, it was starting to get an ever so rusty orange tinge to it. So it was starting to oxidize. So we definitely need more coats of paint than I planned to give. And then down here, we already have rusting. Look at that. All the best laid plans. Oh, darn, it didn't record. Well, that's a shame. Maybe the phone over, no, the phone's not too hot. Well, either way, I just made, I just cut a section of that and I put it right on and it, well, it went so smoothly that it wouldn't have been much to remark about, but it was a short video clip and I felt so cool that it went so smoothly. So here we have the new paint job. And it looks like that actually did solve the issue. I'm gonna keep an eye on this in the future and then we can see how it goes. But it's finally time to add the retro reflector. Now, thankfully I don't have to run out and buy drill bits just yet because I have nails and a blowtorch. There we go. Does the same job. Wish I didn't have to, but oh well. I broke on my drill bits doing another project. Ooh, that actually works. Not bad for a prototype. Just like that. I'm not super happy with it, but it'll do. Let's be honest. This handrail is in a bad location and the person it's intended for isn't even going to use it because um, the husband wants it, the wife doesn't need it, but the husband really thinks it should be there. So I'm building it anyway, but even she's honest, like I don't really need it. So at the end of the day, this isn't really a dire situation. The fact that it doesn't really come out 100% perfect, it's more of an exercise in the end. So I, I won't feel too bad and I'm not gonna try to make it perfect. Ah, uh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy to have that done. And I've learned a lot. I think I can make one even better if there ever comes a time when I need to make one that really works. I really like this mechanism I made. It just strikes me as really cool. I'm finally done with this damn handrail. It's been months that I've been working on this thing. It's I've been dreaming about the issues I've been having with it and such. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Finally, it's done. And thank you very much for watching. See ya.